Baie.jp is the website that lets you shop from stores in Japan. And if you want to see for yourself, you just go down to the video's description, click that link, and sign up for a Baie account, and you will get roughly $20 of American money free to shop with. That is just for Monster Island Buddies fans, so please make sure to use the link in the description. in the house and i just watched godzilla vs kong the fourth and maybe last film in the legendary pictures monster verse and that that was the dumbest fucking movie i've seen in ages i could drive a school bus through its plot holes characters come and go half of them without doing anything nothing connects to anything else what the fuck what the fuckity fuck fuck was that and yet four stars maybe it's because i've been keeping my monsterverse expectations so low since 2014 or maybe it's because i watched this movie in my pajama pants but despite its nonsense script this thing was an absolute blast for me first of all its very existence is historical two rivals from different sides of the world different cultures about to have a rematch decades after the original fight this movie was always going to be an event for me Second, how can I love all the camp and schlock of the Showa era and then not embrace this film's weird decisions? Look, sometimes Godzilla is to be taken very seriously, and sometimes a Godzilla movie is just a thrill ride. And that's what at least half of the MonsterVerse is, the thrill ride Godzilla. I'm gonna pump up your dopamine, Godzilla. This doesn't validate its script flaws. Fun as it is, it could have been even way, way, way better. But for me, in this case, the thrill and fun of the whole experience overpowers its missteps. Short version, Monkey Punch Lizard Orga Likey. Now the characters... <laughs> the characters are split into two different movies. There's Team Godzilla and Team Kong. Team Godzilla's got Madison from The King of the Monsters. She's... she's there. Then we got Bernie, a conspiracy theorist and classic trope in these ensemble disaster flicks. He's also kind of comedy relief. There's also Maddie's schoolmate Josh who tags along. He's sort of comedy. He's also comedy relief. What is this team even doing? I can answer that. Hashtag Team Godzilla. Madison and Bernie are out to prove that this company called Apex is hiding something from the public, and that recent Godzilla attacks are to protect the Earth, not specifically to harm its residents. I see. And did they? I... Oh, shit. Yeah, this plot has no fucking ending! No part where Bernie breaks the story, becomes validated, buries Apex, gets over his weird conspiracy manias. No scene with Madison becoming validated by her dad. They just have a heartfelt reunion, which isn't even earned because... He barely noticed she was missing during the film! The Godzilla team gets to Apex, but then do nothing to expose them or even change the outcome of the movie, save for one thing that's practically an accident! Ah, shit. You know, I told them they were cutting too many scenes. On the Kong side of things, Rebecca Hall plays Dr. Andrews, a scientist who studies Kong and also looks after Gia, who's the last of the Iwi tribe from Kong Skull Island, as the natives have been completely killed off screen, and we've already spent more time talking about it here than the movie did! They explain it! Um, in the, in the Kingdom Kong prequel graphic novel. You have to read that. Oh good, the movie came with homework! Then there's that evil Apex Corporation secretly using a dead King Ghidorah skull to control an advanced Mecha Godzilla to kill Godzilla. That's Dr. Serizawa's son from the other movies. That's Doc. That's the. That's his son, Dr. Serizawa. He's got a whole story in the um, in the book. In the book version, you have to read it. This is a movie review. All of that other shit is irrelevant to a discussion about judging the movie on its own merit. You dumb shit. Jeez, just say it, don't spray it. Next, Dr. Linden, a disgraced scientist with a dead brother. Oh, Bernie has a dead wife. Madison's mom is dead. This guy's dad is definitely dead. Everybody knows a dead person. That's their backstory. The dead person they know. And then, by the way, we never circle back to any of the internal issues these people are having related to these dead people. They just bring them all up in the first act and then drop it. The characterization is balls. The actors all perform fine. It's just that so many of them are pointless. This girl is pointless. This guy is pointless. 
Why not just have Apex go directly to Dr. Andrews? Now Lyndon took her character's purpose and all she could do for the rest of the movie is keep turning her head back to check on Gia. This, um, this is still a four-star review, right? Yeah, okay, let me think of some compliments. The first half of the movie particularly has a brisk but not rushed pacing. I like some moments here that they let breathe a little bit. They even managed to get some feels out of me at one point. So anyway, Team Kong is transporting Kong to a Hollow Earth entrance in a trip sponsored by Apex because they want to tap into the energy resources there. Apex is upfront about this. Every protagonist knows that Apex's plan is to take the energy from Hollow Earth. Yeah, when they get there, Team Kong's like, no, you can't do that, you're the bad guy now. I'm, I'm getting ahead, I'm getting ahead. It happens that they can also use this as a chance to bring Kong to a bigger home. And he does have a vague connection to guiding them there, but whatever. They transport Kong and then Godzilla attacks. Fuck yeah! The team gets to Antarctica and throws their monkey into hollow earth. They fly to the center of the earth, and apparently there's been a giant gorilla statue there this whole time. Imagine that. Kong finds this battle axe, and that's such a bummer. I was really hoping we'd see him make the axe. Maybe with a piece of Godzilla he broke off in a previous battle. Then, one of the greatest things I've ever witnessed happens. You see, by the third act, the writers want all of the characters to converge in Hong Kong. They also need the energy harnessed in Hollow Earth to get to Hong Kong. It's clear that the writers have no fucking clue how to do this, so they just say fuck it and go full-blown absurd. It's almost unapologetic, and I admire that. That energy needs to get to the surface? We could just email it up. Yeah, apparently Apex has the technology to copy and paste energy, which would have been an easy thing to bring up earlier, so it's not such a shock when they drop it on you. Then fucking Godzilla fires his atomic breath into the ground and burns a hole all the way through the Earth's crust, through the black hole thingy, to the core of the Earth itself, nearly 4,000 miles down in one breath. Congratulations, legendary Godzilla! You are now the most powerful Godzilla in history! Shouldn't be damned! Fucking hey. Then Kong jumps through the hole, and now everyone's together and let them fight. The movie really wants you to think there's three rounds of fights in the film, with Godzilla winning one, Kong winning one, and then a tiebreaker. But no. Nah, there's fucking two fights in this film, and Godzilla wins them both. Mechagodzilla is activated to attack Godzilla, but it's taken over by King Ghidorah's psychic energy, so it can attack Godzilla instead. Yes, of course there's a team up at the end, but you can forgive the trope this one time, you cynical prick. When else in your lifetime will you see Godzilla and Kong on the same side? In, a, in, in his children's book. There's this children's book, and it's called... As enjoyable as I find this movie, I feel beaten over the head with missed opportunities. For example, they show you this whole zero gravity area in Hollow Earth, and you're telling me you're not gonna have a fight take place there? Godzilla vs. Kong flying around would be the tits. I'd settle for flying Kong vs. some warbats, the fuck? The film talks about this ancient rivalry and alludes to how there may have been armies of Kongs being wiped out by Godzilla. Holy shit, show me that! A prelude? A flashback? A drawing? Anything! Why can't I see the Godzilla slaughtering the Kongs? These Monsterverse movies tend to mention off-screen things that are more interesting to what we get stuck watching, but it almost feels like it dodges the standards of a real movie because it's basically a big cartoon show. That's really what the structure feels like, and it maybe that's tapping into some latent desire to enjoy a comfort spectacle deep down in my subconscious. I don't know what it is. I don't know why I thoroughly enjoyed this, but can't really enjoy other spectacle films like Rampage. If you hated Godzilla vs. Kong for its annoying character and story decisions, I don't blame you. But for me, via some type of fanboy hypnosis, this is my favorite Monsterverse entry. I mean, yeah, if we're going by a list of, like, which film was closest to reaching objective greatness, I would vote Kong Skull Island, but in terms of just picking one to rewatch the most, Godzilla vs. Kong is gonna get a lot of replays out of this chubby alien collective of millennials. You can't finish the review, you barely even talked about the fights! Or how Kong gets his own victory in this movie! 
Yeah, here's the thing. I had all that in here, but then we cut it. But if you want to read it, you can go out and buy the book adaptation of this review. Fuck you. (laughs) 